Mr. Speaker, I want to thank you for giving me the profound honor of addressing this great citadel of democracy for the fourth time. We meet today at a crossroads of history. Our world is in upheaval. This is not a clash of civilizations. It's a clash between barbarism and civilization. It's a clash between those who glorify death and those who sanctify life. For the forces of civilization to triumph, America and Israel must stand together. Because, because when we stand together, something very simple happens. We win, they lose. And my friends, I came to assure you today of one thing. We will win. October 7th is a day that will forever live in infamy. 3,000 Hamas terrorists stormed into Israel. They butchered 1,200 people from 41 countries, including 39 Americans. They raped women. They beheaded men. They burned babies alive. They killed parents in front of their children and children in front of their parents. They dragged 255 people, both living and dead, into the dark dungeons of Gaza. I will not rest until all their loved ones are home. For nearly 4,000 years, the land of Israel has been the homeland of the Jewish people. It's always been our home. It will always be our home. Listen. The outrageous slanders that paint Israel as racist and genocidal are meant to delegitimize Israel, to demonize the Jewish state, and to demonize Jews everywhere. The prosecutor of the International Criminal Court has shamefully accused Israel of deliberately starving the people of Gaza. This is utter, complete nonsense. The ICC prosecutor accuses Israel of deliberately targeting civilians. The IDF has dropped millions of flyers, sent millions of text messages, made hundreds of thousands of phone calls to get Palestinian civilians out of harm's way. But at the same time, Hamas, Hamas does everything in its power to put Palestinian civilians in harm's way. The vast majority of Americans have not fallen uh, for this Hamas propaganda. They continue to support Israel. And I want to say thank you, America, and thank you, senators and House members, who continue to support us, continue to support Israel, continue to support the truth, and see through the lies. And if Israel's hands are tied, America is next. The ability of all democracies to fight terrorism will be imperiled. Iran is virtually beyond, behind all the terrorism, all the turmoil, all the chaos, all the killing. Iran's regime has been fighting America from the moment it came to power. But Iran understands that to truly challenge America, it must first conquer the Middle East. And for this, it uses its many proxies, including the Houthis, Hezbollah, and Hamas. Yet in the heart of the Middle East, standing in Iran's way, is one proud pro-American democracy, my country, the state of Israel. We're fighting the most radical and murderous enemy of the United States of America. My friends, if you remember one thing, one thing from the speech, remember this. Our enemies are your enemies. Our fight is your fight, and our victory will be your victory. And as we defend ourselves on all fronts, I know that America has our back. And I thank you for it. All sides of the aisle, thank you. My friends, for decades, America has provided Israel with generous military assistance. And a grateful Israel has provided America 
with critical intelligence that saved many lives. We've jointly developed some of the most sophisticated weapons on Earth that help protect both our countries. We help keep Americans' boots off the ground while protecting our shared interests in the Middle East. America and Israel today can forge a security alliance in the Middle East to counter the growing Iranian threat. We saw a glimpse of that potential alliance on April 14th. Led by the United States, more than half a dozen nations worked alongside Israel to help neutralize hundreds of missiles and drones launched by Iran against us. My dear friends, Democrats and Republicans, despite these times of upheaval, I'm hopeful about the future. Working together, I'm confident that our two nations will vanquish the tyrants and terrorists who threaten us both. Victory over liberty, rather victory of liberty over tyranny, victory of life over death, victory of good over evil. That's our solemn commitment. Israel will always remain America's indispensable ally. Israel will always be your loyal friend and your steadfast partner. On behalf of the people of Israel, I came here today to say thank you, America. Thank you for your support and solidarity. Thank you for standing in Israel, with Israel, in our hour of need. Together, together we shall defend our common civilization. Together we shall secure a brilliant future for both our nations. May God bless Israel, may God bless America, and may God bless the great alliance between Israel and America forever.